let's get weird. So anyone else missed the days when you could mention Bioware in a thread and not immediately start a flame war? Today we're talking about one of their best games. Today we talk about Dragon Age Origins. And let's be blunt, this game didn't break new ground, even for Bioware itself. It follows the same style of crafting your hero and saving the day that's been done a ton. Now yes, the formula has been used a lot, but it's for good reason. What sets Dragon Age apart is its size and scale. The game feels huge compared to other RPGs, with the exception of the Elder Scrolls series. On top of that, this game takes a much darker tone than most RPGs. However, unlike some of the more recent things that we've seen go dark for darkness' sake, they do it well, and they mix in lighter elements so it doesn't feel like a quite a depressing drag as it could have been. The story takes place in a relatively small country in the setting, Ferelden. You play as one of six characters that you create yourself. The mind-blowing part of that is that all six of these people exist in every playthrough. In fact, if you're clever enough to look for it, you can figure out what happened to each and every one of these people. The only difference in the story is where Duncan went. Now, as to who Duncan is, Duncan is Ferelden's leader of a group called the Grey Wardens. You can think of them as the Jedi in this setting, only they have more of a chaotic neutral alignment. Their sole purpose is to battle the monstrosities known as the Darkspawn. Now see, it goes like this. When the Darkspawn find one of their entombed leaders, an Archdemon, it starts what's called a Blight. Because until an Archdemon is found, the Darkspawn are more of bestial in nature. They don't really have a malevolent mindset until an Archdemon is awakened. Now once one of them is awakened, it's a full-blown war between the Darkspawn and the rest of Thetis. Now after your origin story, which I'll give props to the game, it does a very good job of making each origin feel unique. Anyway, after that you are sent to Ostagar, and the game proper begins. Now gameplay-wise, this is very similar to an MMO style of combat. As far as a console comparison, think Final Fantasy XII, or something along those lines. This can lead to some issues I've heard gamers have with the game, and that is it can be a little repetitive. However, personally, I like that style because it's more about combat. It's more about combat tactics and less about being a singular character. It's much better than a system where, say, you hit the X button so something awesome can happen. I am not a joke. No, you're a lazy brat with a chip on your shoulder. This game is one of the first I can remember playing that offered this level of customization. You have dozens of skills, abilities, and perks that can help alter your character build. Now while the game says it allows you to alter the story as you go, in reality the storyline is basically the same from beginning to end. However, you can make some small flavor changes. Example, if you choose to have a character die, obviously that character won't be in the rest of the story. However, the storyline itself is fairly unmoving. Now more than just changing the story slightly, your decisions also impact the way your teammates look at you. In fact, if you, if you actually cross a line with them, they may literally turn on you. And on the other side, your warden can find love among his companions. It's one of the first games I noticed that had a quote-unquote relationship system. And the dialogue scenes do a good job of making you believe that the two characters actually are in a relationship, as opposed to just wooden dialogue. The romantic segments, however, are central to the point of being weepingly hilarious. The reason for that is this. This was the first game Bioware produced after Mass Effect came out. And you'll remember when Mass Effect 1 came out, people in the right side made a much bigger deal than was necessary about the quote-unquote sex scenes. Now this was ridiculous at the time, it's ridiculous now, however, bottom line, Bioware knew that there was a segment of people who didn't like that and it might cost them money, so the smart thing to do is what they did. Now we gotta talk about that some people may not like. Bottom line, this game was made for a PC. Don't believe me, go watch anyone who uses the PC with this game. Because trying to play on a much higher difficulty on a console is damn near impossible. The reason for that is because several things that were implemented into the PC version are not implemented here. The main reason is because you don't have that many buttons on your controller. That doesn't mean the console version is bad. It just means that you need to understand there's going to be a difference jumping from one to the other. Now getting back to gameplay, one major issue 
you'll see everywhere about this game is scaling. Once you hit around level 16, most of the enemies, unless you're fighting a quote-unquote boss type, are pushovers at pretty much any difficulty. Again, not a horrible thing, but it feels like it's padding out the difficulty instead of actually giving you something real to fight. Now, graphically, the game holds up. It looks very good, particularly for a game in that era. I mean, bear in mind, this game does have a few years on it. Loading times may be a little bit long, but honestly, it never really bothered me that much. I've seen much longer loading screens on other games. Now, after all of that, what do we have as a final verdict? Overall, I give Dragon Age Origins a 4 out of 5. I feel this is a game that really does hold up after many years since it came out. I still play it to this day, and I believe I will for many years to come. Until next time, my name is Vega Goose saying thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.